or options. So in this um, uh, at this point, the government decided to uh, promote more basic science research. They established um, ICERs. Uh, there are now seven ICERs. There is the uh, Indian Statistical Institute. There is Chennai Mathematical Institute. There is Homi Baba National Institute. CSR, uh, CSAR, PAFR, then CSR, and CBS. A lot of institutes now where you can have an education in basic science and continue or do your research there um, in basic science. So, if you want to be a basic science researcher, a formal route after your plus two will be to take a bachelor's, that is, uh, undergraduate degree, or you may call it UG. It is three to four years. Uh, most of the time, BSc is three years. Sometimes there is a uh, there is a variation of the course called BS, which is four years. It is offered. It was offered for a time in IAC. I'm not sure whether it's still continuing. Yeah, notification, notification and there is uh, then then you take masters. So in bachelor's, you get exposed to the current understanding. Uh, to the basics of a, a subject. So if you take a BSc in mathematics, you get an introduction to almost all the branches in mathematics. And in masters, you might specialize a little bit and understand the current research, where the current research ha uh, has reached in this particular subject. Where is it is? Where is it stuck now? How much has it progressed? What are the uh, open questions? These all things you will. Um, explore or you will uh, understand during your masters so masters is uh, or otherwise called post graduation pg in india is usually two years after that once you understand where the research has uh, brought us in a subject you start your own research that is called doctorate or phd which may take up anywhere from three to seven years or even more depending on whether you are doing it part-time or full-time etc so while doing doctorate you are not learning something from a book you are creating new knowledge you are doing experiments like cv raman did but a bit more complicated and sophisticated because it was 100 years ago now it is uh, 100 years after we have more more detailed uh, view already so we have to go further in detail so we need more sophisticated instruments and experiments as i told before so you will be doing you will be doing these experiments and your work your research will later hopefully come into textbooks which a 10 year old or sorry a 15 year old might read and learn in this 10 standard textbook so to promote basic science in india the government of india uh, decided to award a fellowship called KV Tuda. You can imagine why, because most of the brilliant students were going for engineering after clearing JE mains or APMT, etc. They were going for engineering. So there were very few brilliant students coming into basic science research. So the government wanted to promote it, so they started this program called Kishore Vaigyanik Solsa. It's a fellowship program only for basic science students who are aspiring to be researchers. This was formulated by the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India. It is for a period of bachelor's and master's. So after your plus two, until your PhD, all the time, uh, you will get a fellowship, which includes several benefits, which I will tell you later. So who all can avail this fellowship? When I say basic science students, who are those students? Those will be students who take up chemistry, physics, mathematics, statistics, biochemistry, microbiology, cell biology, ecology, molecular biology, botany, zoology, physiology, biotechnology, neurosciences, bioinformatics, marine biology, uh, geology, human biology, genetics, biomedical sciences, applied physics, material science, environmental science, or geophysics. These are a comprehensive list of basic science subjects. Uh, which you can take and avail the fellowship of MBI. So, how to avail the fellowship? So, to be selected for this fellowship, uh, you have to demonstrate your uh, research aptitude by an aptitude test. Usually, there is also an interview, but due to COVID, they have decided that this time there is only an aptitude test. So, usually the case was that you do an aptitude test, then they select a certain number of people and then they do an interview and after that interview only a part of the selected students will actually get the fellowship so this time the test date is 
Sunday, the seventh of November. Who can write the exam? So you can already decide whether you want to do basic science and research. Sometimes you decide already when you are going into plus one. Sometimes you think that you will become a doctor, and then when you are in plus two, you might decide that you want to go for a basic science research. Some people do not even make up their mind by the time they pass plus two, but then they decide to join basic science. So all of these people can actually write KVPY and avail the fellowship. But note that when you write and get the uh, when you pass the exam in plus one and plus two, you will not get any fellowship during your plus one and plus two. It will only get activated if you later join for a basic science degree. So um, the plus one students who write this exam is called stream essay, and then there are plus two students who call the stream SX, and then there are uh, UG first year, that is BSc first year students who are doing basic science uh, subjects. They are called stream SB. So for SA and SX, that is plus one and plus two, their fellowship is activated only when they join for UG courses in the fields I mentioned earlier in this slide. Okay, that's a good point. So, what are the benefits of uh, KVPY? The main attraction is the financial benefits, right? So, during your uh, BSc, that is first three years of uh, your BSc, or if you are doing uh, an integrated MS, for instance, in MES Mambada, you have integrated biology course. In Hyderabad Central University, you have integrated uh, uh, MSc. And in ICERS, you have integrated MS, BS MS. In these courses, it's a five year course. So for the first three year of those courses, or first three years of your BSc in a, in a regular university college, you have 5,000 rupees uh, per month coming into your bank account without any delay. I've never experienced any delay, so it's very prompt. And then you have 20,000 INR annual grant. This annual grant is given so that the students have to do something. Uh, or the whole fellowship has certain conditions. I will get to it later. And during PG, that your, is your MSc, or the last two years of your integrated five-year course, you have 7,000 rupees uh, per month, and later also a 28,000 uh, rupees uh, annual grant. So this is uh, for, uh, in, in India, for instance, where most of the time the education is not super costly, uh, especially if you get into a government college. This is uh, a good, uh, money that you can later use for several things which I can mention later. Other benefits is that if you clear KVPY, you don't need any other entrance exam, you can directly get into ICER. So ICER, as I mentioned, it's relatively new but very good institute for getting basic science education. Another is uh, important thing is that internship opportunities. So when you become, uh, when you want to become a scientist, you don't have to wait until your MSc is over. You can start um, experimenting. You can start learning how scientists work via internships. So what is an internship? An internship is when during your summer break or winter break, you write to a professor who is doing, who has his own lab or a research group, and he's working in a research lab or research group or in IAT or IAC or ICER. You write to him, Sir, I need. Uh, I'm a first year student of BSc Physics or BSc Mathematics. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, do uh, some research and learn about research techniques. Can I come to your lab and uh, learn it there, or can I do some experiments, or can I be part of a small project? And he might reply, uh, "Yes, uh, please come to my lab, visit my lab." And for that uh, purpose, you can use your annual grant money so you don't have to pay for the hostel. You can pay from this annual grant money and then you can be part of his research group where he will have PhD students and postdocs who are there doing research and they will guide you. They will teach you some techniques and you will go back to your second year with a much more amount of knowledge and experiment, uh, experience. And you are already on the road to become a scientist uh, while you are in your first year or second year or third year of your BSc. Uh, so this makes a huge difference when you later apply for PhD. You can already mention in the application letter that I have learned this technique. Uh, I also know this technique and more interested in this technique. That's the kind of candidate who will get their PhD easily 
a, a place for their PhD easily compared to a person who just finished MS without any experience, without knowing any technique. Uh, so this advantage is huge with KBPI. When you start a letter to a professor asking for an internship with your first sentences, I am uh, Aditya, I'm a KVPY fellow, that immediately catches the attention of the professor because there are very few KVPY fellows all in India. So this is a very prestigious fellowship, but it's not difficult to crack. You should all try. The third benefit is the Vijoshi National Science Camp. So this is an exciting part of being a KVPY fellow that you get to go to a camp organized by KVPY where you will stay in uh, one either in Aisar Kolkata or IAC Bangalore for three days all free food and nice talks by great Indian scientists. So some of the great Indian scientists working in India and abroad will come to talk to you and you will have uh, a, a, an opportunity to interact with them, uh, to see their work and to understand what they are doing. And you will get to know a lot of your peer, uh, um, a lot of students that uh, will make a lifelong company for you in your uh, career and in life. So this all in all, KB, being a KVPA fellow make you a much better candidate for a PhD position compared to any other uh, student. So it's a huge privilege, it's a huge prestige. So do uh, do not waste it. Please try it uh, and uh, good luck for the exam. But there are certain responsibilities as a KVPA fellow. Uh, so every year the KVPA fellow, KVPA will ask you to um, uh, fill, an, uh, fill out an application form to renew your fellowship. As part of the application, you have to show the um, uh, a letter from your uh, college uh, principal or head of the college or university saying that you have passed all subjects in 60 per, with 60 percentage marks uh, and also you have to put in case of chemistry it will be advanced spectroscopy um, any any kind of fancy machines and instruments in, are, are available in these labs and there are very nice projects uh, developed by these um, these uh, scientists and they are working on it and you can be a small part of it sometimes you can even get away you can also uh, be part of the project so much that sometimes you will get um, uh, you will be part of a paper that is being published which can be of enormous help to you later when you apply for a phd Now, getting into the part of the exam. So, as I said, this year there won't be an interview. There is only, only an exam. And the part one of the exam will be 20 questions from all four subjects. Physics, Chemistry, Mathematics and Biology. All four, you don't have to attend all four subjects. You only have to attend all uh, any three out of this. But if you attend a fourth one, they will take the best three out of the four. So the, in the part one, you have 20 questions from each of the four subjects. You have a subtotal of, uh, and, and then there is a part two where there is 10 questions from each subject. This time the marks are two. In the part one, there is only one mark. Uh, and then you have to attend all questions from any three out of the four subjects. Uh, there is no fixed syllabus. So it's not it's the questions are always not very similar to the entrance questions but uh, there are if you prepare for an entrance 
then the rest is mostly logical reasoning questions so the problems will challenge your logic so you have to carefully apply logic and uh, try to deduce the answer uh, otherwise it is mostly ncrt syllabus for the students in plus 1 your syllabus will be up to the plus 1 syllabus you will not have questions usually from plus 2 syllabus for uh, those who are attending from plus 2 and uh, degree first year uh, you will have questions from plus 2 and sometimes a little bit of questions from the degree first year but don't bother it don't sweat it don't try to learn degree first year's uh, textbook just uh, just follow ncrt do uh, several mcqs as you would prepare for an entrance exam try to do some logical reasoning questions um uh, my advice will be to do all the kvpy previous question papers they are all available in the kvpy website even the answer keys if you have any doubts approach your teachers for this uh, for the answers if you are prepared if you have prepared with mcqs multiple choice questions enough and you do all the kvpy previous um, question papers you are quite well prepared for the kvpy exam that's all uh, thank you uh, thank you and good luck for everyone and yeah, thank you spark institute for giving me this opportunity to talk to you all and um welcoming any questions that you may have yeah thank you very much uh, sayed abdur rahman for a nice presentation now is the session is for the audience students can ask their doubt uh, please make use of this opportunity ियर You just joined this academic year, right? You you completed your plus two last year. Yeah, by two thousand twenty, I completed my uh, plus two, and now I am uh, in first year. Uh, I'm sorry. If you are if you are just joining uh, the college this year, you can apply. Like if you are starting your first year now in June. So usually the academic year starts in June, right? So, if you were without any COVID, you would you would have started your first year in twenty twenty one June. Then you can apply. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Good evening, sir. Hello. Yeah, sir. Uh, firstly, sir, thank you so much for providing such a wonderful session, sir. Uh, so actually, my question is: uh, If we attend KVPY exam, and uh, if we get scholarship in that, and we just uh, pass in that exam, and we attend uh, JE mains exams, and we crack that also, then uh, which would be prefer? Like which would uh, we choose preferably, sir? Uh, it depends. If you are, uh, if you have IIT JE clearance, and you want, as I told, you want to get into BTEC, doing an engineering course. You have to go to IIT or NIT, and that's what JE means mainly uh, is for. Then you can choose that. If you are doing basic, if you want to do basic science degree, uh, do not choose JE. Choose your KVPY fellowship to get into ICER, so that you have uh, you will get the fellowship. Okay, sir. So may I ask another question? Uh, sir, uh, if I get a uh, KVPY scholarship, is it uh, related with uh, getting into IIT something like that? Uh, if you clear KVPY, you have direct entrance to uh, ICES for the basic degree courses. There are some IITs that might offer basic degree courses like BS or BSc. You have to check because every IIT is not offering the same courses. So if you have KVPY and JEE, you can get into uh, an IIT for the, your bachelor's program with the JEE, and then use your KVPY fellowship while you do the basic science degree. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, sir, uh, now time is very less, no, sir. So can we prepare in this uh, reasonable time, sir? Why not? Uh, I would, I would uh, advise them focus on the previous question papers. 
ओके सर थैंक यू सो मच सर Yeah, I think he just solved us broken. Uh, Sayid, uh, there is a students have asked the questions. Uh, Why uh, the text message? Please check the message box. Uh, Sayid, please your mic is off. I think. Please unmute your mic. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, in the chat box is here uh, for all the details regarding the exam i am referring you to the website so do not take it from my word just go log into this website and you have all the details there i would rather help you with what uh, other details about what happens when you get a qbi fellowship i uh, while you uh, think about questions i will just tell you my personal story um i got into icer um, without kvpy by using icer aptitude test and then the first year of icer i got kvpy fellowship and the first year uh, i did not uh, i did an in a small internship with a lab in icer itself in the second year i went to icer kolkata for an internship uh, with uh, a lab where i learned a lot of new techniques that i was not familiar with and then um, in the third year Uh, i did uh, third year and fourth year i did my projects in icer itself so since i was in icer the the good thing was that the lab, there were research labs in icer itself so i did not necessarily have to go to another institute but the, there are several colleges in india where there are no many research labs so if you are doing uh, your bsc there and you get kvpy you will have to go to icers or iacs for your for your um uh internships is there any possibility for second year msc student to write kvpy exam for higher studies unfortunately not kvpy is strictly for the undergraduate ug and pg students for phd uh, if you are already in your msc um, try um, csir jrf exams Uh, which uh, will give you the fellowship to do phd someone asked about uh, online exam uh, the exam is online uh, is available online in certain centers not in all centers as i said uh, in the application tab of the website they are uh, giving more details there uh, with anidarshan asks is engineering available with kvpy uh, unfortunately not kvpy is strictly for basic science uh, programs if i pass the kvpy exam but i am not interested to join iits i like to join an autonomous college will i be able to get a scholarship yes as long as you are doing a basic science degree as i said chemistry mathematics biology math, uh, zoology botany physiology biology biology bioinformatics this kind of courses where you learn basic science uh, if you pass the kvpy exam you can avail the fellowship even in a, a university college or in a regular autonomous college yes
uh, advise the process for KVPY for NRI students. Um, so uh, KVPY is strictly for Indian citizens. As long as you are an Indian citizen, it doesn't matter whether you are an NRI or a, an R, um, uh, Indian resident, you can apply for um, KVPY. And also there has been a recent court ruling by Karnataka High Court that even students with OCI, Overseas Citizen of India card, who are not regular citizens in India, but who have roots in India can even apply for it. Uh, but I'm not sure how, whether you will be able to avail the fellowship and all. Siddhant Baral, yes, you can only, you only have to write three uh, subjects in the exam. I have to correct two things uh, uh, regarding the exam in part one for plus two and degree first year students. You only have to uh, uh, attend three, uh, any three subjects in part one and any two subjects in part two. Sorry. And for plus one students, you have to attend PCMB, all four. The portion for uh, subjects is um, physics, chemistry, maths, and biology. That is usually the NCRT portions. Nothing extra or uh, officially KVPY do not KVPY say that they do not officially give it a syllabus. But from experience and previous question papers, we can see that it's usually NCRT syllabus, uh, like any general entrance exam. Dharini, yes, if you if you attend all four, you will they will choose the best three. But uh, I would advise to attend the strongest three subjects, your strongest three subjects, and only if you have absolutely if you have free time, attend the fourth one. Otherwise, you will lose time uh, attending something that is not your best. Yes, you can write a sex exam without uh, attending essay. Yes, you can. You don't have to attend in plus one to at, uh, attend in plus two. You only have to pass it once. Eh? If you pass it once in plus one, then you don't have to attend again in plus two. You already have the fellowship. And if you don't attend in plus one, it's okay. You can still attend in plus two. And even if you attend in both, uh, do not attend in both, you can still attend only when you are in your first year BSc. But the problem is that when you are uh, in your first year BSc, for example, if you join this year, that means you are joining in June and in November you write the exam, the results and everything comes out by February and the fellowship only starts from the next year, eh? from the second year of your BSc. Yeah, if you are in plus one, you have to attend uh, PCMB, Physics, Chemistry and Maths and Biology, yes. All questions are compulsory. In, in plus one. So it, it's absolutely important. I again reiterated this this point that you have to um, practice your uh, the previous question papers from the website the KVPY official website, uh, please do that because the logical reasoning questions are not widely available online like the usual entrance multiple choice questions. So this logical reasoning questions in each part is uh, important for you uh, in the KVPY exam.
professor rashid i think the questions are over no uh yes the questions are mcq yes multiple choice question no written uh, no written questions and you can in selected senders they also make it available online uh, as an online test otherwise it's offline and khadija and khaira uh, an idea on how to approach the paper basically you are uh, if you are well versed with your ncert syllabus and you have some experience with multiple choice questions you are fine but i would still say the best preparation other than your usual entrance preparation is to do the previous question papers There is um, in appearing in plus one and plus two. The difference is that when in your in, when you are in plus two, you only have to attend. The question paper is different. That includes plus one and plus two syllabuses for uh, when you appear in plus two. You have uh, syllabus uh, covering portions from both plus one and plus two. Other than that, there is another um, thing: is that you only have to attend three out of four subjects wh when you are applying uh, when you are attending in plus two. Um, essay SX difference. That's what I'm talking about. In essay. That is in plus one. When you attend KPU exam, you have to attend all questions, all questions from all four subjects: physics, chemistry, maths, and biology. When in plus two or B streams, you only have to attend three subjects from part one and two subjects from part two. Basically, you have a lot of time to complete the exam. So it is uh, the uh, the KPU exam. The another feature of KPU exam is not usually a race for time. it is uh, usually a race to think just uh, you you have to apply your logic so they give enough time to think so they really want people to think and answer uh, sb and sx papers are usually the same yes uh, nidarshan uh, exactly how many papers um, i don't understand your question if you mean what all subjects they will provide in the question paper all four subjects in part 1 and part 2 if you are attending from sx or sb that is plus 2 or undergraduate first degree you only have to attend three subjects in the first part and two subjects in the second part uh, for sa uh, do we need to present plus 1 modules unfortunately yes if you go through the question papers you can see that there are questions from plus 1 but it's also a bit of 10 standard 10 uh, standard syllabus but some questions do appear from the beginning part of plus one but I, 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 we cannot be and uh, we can never be sure because they do not themselves say that this is the syllabus but only from previous question papers you can see that there are some questions appearing from plus two plus one portions not plus two plus one portions now excel exam uh, sorry shankar uh, i don't understand what is excel exam Plus if you are attending plus one, then uh, you are attending plus one. That means this year you are going to be in plus two, actually, right? This academic year. In that case, you will be using SX stream. Yeah. So you, if you are attending eleventh exams now, that means you are going to start your plus two very soon, like in next month or something, right? Then you are in SX stream. uh he just that link is not working for the registration oh okay so so if the link is not working i think it is working it may be a problem of the time you can check it again later or you can contact us through the uh, phone number which you have already got uh for this program
I think uh, if no more doubts means we can wind up the session. If anybody else? Uh, any doubts? Hi Shubham, uh, uh, start learning your plus one lessons earlier. Start practicing in multiple choice questions and do the previous question papers on uh, KVPY website. When you do the previous question papers, you will know where the questions are coming from. So you can go back and do the multiple choice questions from that chapter of the plus one syllabus. And don't uh, be disappointed in case if you do not uh, crack the essay uh, in plus one. Try again uh, SX during plus two. Uh, at that time, you only have to focus on, you know, three subjects, not on all subjects. 180 minutes. The duration of the exam, uh, at least for SX and SB, is 180 minutes. I don't remember exactly for SS stream. But all these details uh, are in the question paper. If you take the previous question paper on the top, all the instructions and the time and everything is there. I'm putting a link again here just for those who want to uh, go to the KVPI website. This is the original KVPI website. Eh? There are other fake websites. So please, please go to this right one. Kishore, uh, uh, sorry, Nidarshan, uh, what exactly do you mean by cutoff? Usually the scores are not published by KVPY. They only publish the names of people who have passed or in the in earlier mm -hmm. cases, people who have uh, been selected for an interview. Now this time uh, due to COVID, they're only conducting uh, an exam. So it must be, um, they will just publish the names who have passed. Sir, the cutoff here means like a person should score that much marks to get into KVPY scholarship. Is meaning that, sir? Ah uh, no, there is no cutoff. Eh? Uh, you only have to um, uh, be enrolled in plus one, plus two, or in undergraduate degree. But if you want to renew your um, fellowship, you have to score sixty percent mark, and you have to do a Vijayashi summer camp or a summer internship. This all details you will know when you pass. Uh, like they will give you a, a Vijoshi summer camp invitation uh, to uh, by post, which you can register and go. Uh, most of the times, if you get a KVPY, you are most likely uh, in an institute of national repute. So there will be several students extra coming along with you for these summer camps. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, there is, uh, uh, if you mean the cutoff for uh, entering uh, the fellowship, there is a 60 percentage cutoff, yes, in your board marks. But in the end, if you are going to crack KVPI, I'm sure you will all get the uh, 60 percentage marks. And there is a, a special uh, reduction uh, in the, in the uh, eligibility criteria for uh, students from SCST and uh, physically handicapped students. So please keep uh, an eye on this also. Uh, I hope now let us wind up the session. Okay. Uh, because I miss uh, most of them how after their doubts. Okay, uh, uh, dear. Sayyid Abdurrahman, it was a very nice session and I hope this class is very much useful for the participants also. Uh, we are conducting the coaching program for to crack the KVPY that will start on uh, August 20. Uh, you can apply using the link. If the link is not working, you can call to us or contact us on the number that we have already given. And uh, uh, I uh, uh, I'm, 
I thank the speaker and also the participants for the active presentation or active participation. Uh, we are extremely thankful to you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone. Good luck. Bye.